Today we are going to talk about what is widely considered the first circumnavigation of the Earth. We'll start with Fernando Magellan or Fernão do Magalhães. Magellan was a Portuguese explorer and his famous voyage started on September 21st, 1519. The fleet included five ships, the flagship Trinidad, San Antonio, Concepcion, Santiago and Victoria. The crew of about 270 included men from Portugal, Spain, Italy, Germany, Belgium, Greece, England and France. Among them were Magellan's brother-in-law Duarte Barbosa, navigator João Cerro, cartographer Estevão Gomes, Antonio Pigafetta, a Venetian scholar and traveler, who was asked to be part of this journey and who kept an accurate journal. There were two other guys who were important to the Magellan's crew, merchant ship captain Juan Sebastian Elcano and Magellan's servant Enrique of Malacca. Later we are going to tell why those two were important. Magellan didn't actually plan to take the trip around the globe, but his voyage was rather more practical, I think. He was in the service of Charles I, King of Spain, who was also Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor and was in search of western route to the Spice Islands or Maluku Islands, known for its stores of precious spices like cloves, cinnamon and nutmeg. The Spanish were desperate to discover this alternate path because of 1494's Treaty of Tordesillas, a decree from Pope Alexander VI that had essentially divided the world in half between the Spanish and the Portuguese. This agreement placed the more practical eastern route to the Spice Islands under the Portuguese control forcing the Spanish to find a new passage by sailing west around South America. As I mentioned before, Fernando was from Portugal and the King of Spain was the one who sponsored his voyage. This outraged King Manuel I of Portugal, who sent operatives to disrupt Magellan's preparations, ordered that his family properties be vandalized and may have even made an attempt to assassinate him. Even when voyage started, Magellan had troubles. His mostly Spanish crew resented the idea of being led by a Portuguese captain and there were two mutinies before they even reached the Pacific. Worried that Magellan's obsession with the finding passage to the Pacific was going to doom the expedition, in April 1520, three of his five ships turned against him. Magellan and his supporters ultimately thwarted the revolt and he even marooned two men on an island when he found they were planning a third mutiny. The rebellions continued later that year when the vessel San Antonio deserted the fleet and prematurely returned to Spain. There were horrific storms near southern South America and as a result one of the ships was lost to the rough seas. After that, in November 1520, they crossed through the passage that is now called Strait of Magellan to calm and gentle ocean which Magellan named Mar Pacifico, meaning peaceful sea in Portuguese. Magellan believed that he would quickly reach the Spice Islands, but his fleet would sail the Pacific Ocean for 98 days before reaching any habitable land. And that first land that they have reached was Mariana Islands and Guam on March the 6th, 1521. Shortly after that, on March 17th, they reached the island of Homonhon in the Philippines, with only 150 crew members left. They traded gifts with Raja Siau of Mazaua, who guided them to Cebu on the April the 7th. There, on the island Cebu, Magellan met his death. He became friends with Raja Humabon of Cebu, and later successfully turned both Raja and his queen to Christianity. Some historians believe that Magellan was a devoted Christian who took upon himself a side mission, if you will, to turn anyone he can to Christianity on his journey. Afterward, Raja Humabon and his ally Datu Zula convinced Magellan to kill their enemy Datu Lapu Lapu on Mactan. Magellan wanted to convert Lapu Lapu to Christianity, just like he did with Humabon, but Lapu Lapu rejected that. On the morning of 27th of April, 1521, Magellan sailed to Mactan with small attack force. During the resulting battle against Lapu Lapu's troops, Magellan was struck by a bamboo spear and later surrounded and finished off with other weapons. This is what Antonio Pigafetta wrote about the event. Thus we fought for more than an hour until a native succeeded in thrusting a spear into the captain's face. He then, being irritated, pierced the native's breast with his lance and left it in his body and tried to draw his sword, he was unable to draw it more than halfway, on account of a javelin wound which he had received in the right arm. The enemies, seeing this, all rushed against him, and one of them, with the great sword, like a great scimitar, gave him a great blow on the left leg, which brought the captain down on his face. Then the natives threw themselves upon him, and ran him through his lances and scimitars, and all the other arms which they had, 
so they deprived of life our mirror, our light, our comfort, our true guide. After Magellan's death, his slave Enrique left the expedition, citing a clause in Magellan's will freeing him in the event of Magellan's death. Enrique of Malacca is important to the story because some believe that he was actually the one who circumnavigated the globe first. Pigafetta in his journal referred to him as Henrique, which was hispanized as Enrique in official Spanish documents. As set out in Magellan's last will, Magellan acquired Enrique as a slave at Malacca, most probably at the early stages of the siege of Malacca by the Portuguese general Alfonso de Albuquerque in 1511. His Christian name Enrique may indicate that his capture was on July the 13th, the feast day of Saint Henry, which was several days from the start of the siege. Enrique was taken on the expedition primarily because of his ability to speak several languages, allegedly Spanish, Portuguese and Malay. After Magellan's death, there is no record of him anywhere. It is believed that he left the expedition at that point. Based on the assumption that Enrique actually began his travels further east than Magellan, some believe that he was the first who circumnavigated the world, beating Magellan's crew by only a few days. In some southern Asian countries, Enrique is considered a hero. Now, back to the voyage, when Magellan died, surviving members could not decide who should succeed him. The men finally voted on a joint command, with the leadership divided between Duarte Barbosa and navigator João Cerro. Within a few days, these two were also dead at the hands of Raja Humabon. Pilot João López de Carvalho then took the command of the fleet, which by this point consisted of only two ships, Trinidad and Victoria. But men saw Carvalho as a weak leader and at the same time Elcano's reputation grew each day. Here we're going to go back and see who actually was Elcano. Remember we mentioned those mutinies at the beginning of the journey? Well, in one mutiny one of the participants was none other than Elcano. After Magellan successfully crushed the rebellion, he threw Elcano in chains. After five months of hard labor, Elcano was spared and was made captain. No doubt that Magellan knew what Elcano's experience could mean to the expedition and thus spared his life. Elcano fought in the Italian wars under the command of Gonzalo Fernandez de Cordoba and in 1509 he joined the Spanish expedition organized by Cardinal Francisco Jimenez de Cisneros against Algiers. Later he became merchant ship captain in Seville and the reason why he joined Magellan's expedition was because he violated Spanish laws by surrendering a ship to Genoan bankers in repayment of a debt, so he had to seek pardon from the Charles I. Finally, we can go back to the voyage. They reached their destination, the Maluku Islands, on November the 6th, 1521. They rested and resupplied and filled their holds with the precious cargo of clubs and spice. On the December 18th, the ships were ready to leave, but Trinidad sprang a leak and was unable to be repaired. Carvalho stayed with the ship along with 52 others. The Victoria, commanded by Elcano with 17 other European survivors of the expedition, continued its westward voyage to Spain. So that means one thing at least was accomplished. Unintentionally, the earth was circumnavigated, since the crew of 18, starved and filthy, finally reached San Lucar de Barameda on September the 6th, 1522. As far as the main goal of the journey, western route to Spice Islands was not used for many years. Spain was too busy taking land in South America and it was easier for the Portuguese to get to the east by sailing eastward around the Cape of Good Hope. Elcano was awarded a coat of arms by Charles I of Spain, featuring a globe with the motto Primus circumdedisti me. In Latin, you went around me first. That's all for now, thanks for watching.